Hello! In this video we'll introduce the holding period return, also known as the holding period yield. The holding period return can be calculated for any type of investment. But in this case imagine you invested in a security. So the holding period return from your investment in the security would equal the end of period value and you can think of this end of period value as either the amount you receive on the day you sell the security or if you are to hold the security until maturity, then you can think of this end of period value as the amount you receive when the security reaches its maturity date and makes its final payment. So starting again with our formula over here, the holding period return equals the end of period value minus the beginning of period value divided by the beginning of period value. And the beginning of period value is the price you pay when you purchase the security. So the holding period return is simply the percentage change in the value of your investment from one point in time to the next. And the length of time between the two points is the period you hold your investment. And if we were to manipulate this a bit, we would get end of period value over beginning of period value minus one. And for those who cannot see why this is the case, it's simply because this is the same as this. And since this part equals 1, we end up with end of period value over beginning of period value minus 1. Make sense? Let's now illustrate with some examples. Elishma Hohar purchased a stock for 50 euros and sold it two years later for 70 euros. Calculate her holding period return. This is simply the end of period value of 70 minus the beginning of period value of 50 divided by the beginning of period value of 50. And this is the same as 70 over 50 minus 1. This is what we saw in the previous slide as well. This gives us a 40% holding period return. And if we wanted to be more precise, then we would label this the 2-year holding period return. And this gives us the opportunity to make it perfectly clear that the holding period can be any period of time, depending on how long the investor holds her investment. It may be a matter of days or as long as several years. In fact, strictly speaking, the holding period could be even less than a day if you are engaging in what is called day trading. Day trading is buying and selling securities within the same trading day. So in that case, the holding period would be even less than a day. But that's considered an extremely risky practice and is not so often observed. So it's highly unlikely you'll ever need to calculate a holding period return of less than a day. Let's now see another example. Mariam Babar purchased a bond for 500 euros and sold it six months later for 440 euros right after receiving a coupon payment of 40 euros. What is her holding period return? Through this example, I want you to see that besides the appreciation or depreciation in the price of an investment, interim cash flows are also included in the calculation of the holding period return as part of the end of period value. In this case, this 40 euros coupon payment is one such interim cash flow. So the holding period return is 440 plus 40 minus 500 divided by 500. And in this case, I also use different colors for the end of period and beginning of period values to make it clear that the end of period value also comprises of the 40 euros coupon payment. This is the same as 440 plus 40 over 500 minus 1 which gives us a negative 4% holding period return. Specifically, this is the 6-month holding period return. So our investor realized the loss. In the previous example, where we dealt with a stock, there were no interim cash flows. So the holding period return was only a function of the change in the price of the stock. And since the stock appreciated in value, the holding period return was positive. If Elish Mahohar, who was our investor in that case, had received a dividend, then that would also be included in the calculation 
as part of the end of period value. Before I close this video, I'd like us to see what the holding period return would be in this example if there were no interim cash flows. In fact, I would like you to pause the video right now and do the calculation on your own. Assuming you did that, the 6-month holding period return would be negative 12%. The loss would be much greater relative to before. So although interim cash flows significantly decrease the loss from the fall in the price of the bond, they are not enough by themselves to turn the loss into a gain. They only manage to partially offset the loss. Let's continue in the next video.